Hey everyone, I'm Nathan, and I've been a DM for about eight years now, which is the equivalent of a small child. So I thought it would be a fun idea to draw your D&D character submitted to my Patreon. Yeah, that pretty much explains it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the characters. James submitted Fracas Stonemender, an Oath of Ancients Paladin Dwarf of Clan Stonemender, widely known for its belligerence and scrappy nature. Fracas is at a heart a gentle soul, but struggles with a short temper. He has long reddish curly hair braided tight against his head on one side, and a long beard with metal ornamentation woven into it. He wears a light blue tabard bearing the symbol of Vidigrath, the god of mending and reparation, a sunburst encircled by a chain. His goal is to unite the warring nations of his homeland through peaceful intervention and compromise. Using force only as a last resort, he is a little slim for a dwarf, a bit wiry, but still has that iconic dwarven burliness and broadness. Brachus was an interesting character to start with, mainly because, for the most part, he is a stereotypical dwarf, so it was very much in my comfort zone. Whenever I do a new D&D campaign with my players, I always love drawing their characters for them. It's just like my gift as the dungeon master to them, being able to like visualize what their characters look like. It's just really fun, and I am an illustrator, so it just makes sense. You can see here I'm working out the pose. Uh, yeah, the symbol he's making with his hand is like very common amongst old Renaissance paintings of saints. It's like a religious symbol meaning peace. I kind of loved in his description how he doesn't like violence. So I made the decision to have him making that hand sign. I went back and forth with like whether or not to make it be the Vulcan <laughs> sign for peace, but I settled on this. And then I gave him like a broken sword. I, it's like gold and it's like cut off. This is not in the description. It's like 100% my interpretation um, or invention that he would have like this holy symbol, which is a broken sword because he's against violence and he's trying to stop the warring nations. I just felt like that was a cool detail. Uh, yeah, and I loved the hairstyle. We love a redheaded dwarf. It's just a classic D&D archetype. The only thing that gave me a little bit of trouble in this design was the description of him being a bit wiry um, or like slightly skinny for a dwarf, but still wide because I was like, how is one skinny but wide? And so <laughs> my solution for that was just giving him very like massive traps so he has wide back muscles and a wide rib cage but his actual limbs are very lean muscles so they're skinny and wiry um that's ultimately what i decided on and you may also notice that for this piece i'm not going with my normal cell shading style for art i just wanted to draw y'all i wanted to be head empty mindlessly painting DD characters so i don't stick to one style Whatever comes into my mind is what I did for each of these designs. So they're all a little bit different. Um, yeah, and that's basically because I just, I really didn't go in with a plan. I really went into this piece just knowing what shapes I wanted. So I just blotched in some colors and was like, oh, it feels like a digital painting. So that's the um, style that we went with, which was pretty fun. You can see here, I'm sort of like negotiating the outfit and adding detail to like the hair and stuff like that. It's really interesting. Um, the first time I read the description, I missed certain details. One being that there was like metal ornamentation in the beard. So that comes a little later <laughs> in the process. Um, yeah, and right now I'm working on the braids in his hair. And it was funny because while I was drawing this, my friends were actually working on editing a short film and I was kind of like assistant editing. So I was like, drawing with one hand and one side of my brain and the other side of my brain was watching live action clips and uh, making commentary on how it should be edited. You can see here I just blitzed through the design of that sun. Um, I don't know the difference between a sunburst and a sun and I couldn't really figure out what the difference was online so I just decided that a sunburst meant not a circle like having rays off of the sun. And yeah, I just put a chain around it that felt right. Uh, and I put it on the tavern. And then here you can see I'm actually adding the metal to the beard. Originally, I just put that ribbon in it. Um, and then I was like, oh no, it's supposed to be metal ornamentation. So yeah, figured that out, which was fun. He's pretty much done at this point. The only thing that I do is add this backlighting rim light to sort of 
round him out and to add more implied depth <laughs> and rendering. So he just feels more like a physical person, I guess. And then I just play with adding little details um, with light on the hair and on the beard and then brighten up the face a little bit with that spotlight, add a background color. And this is the finished fracas. Very happy with how he turned out. I like how his hair looks. It's so pretty. Dabadudu's character, Spine, is a shifter, though he believes he is human. A bard barian, Spine is a happy-go-lucky strongman who was once a notable athlete. He wears an overcoat that he tore the sleeves off of and a pair of athletic shorts to keep moving. He is fuzzy all over and has scars from the tragic events of the Beer, Bear, and Honey Festival. A cool thing about Spine is that Dabadudu actually provided a reference image that was like a little chibi version of the character, so I actually was able to visualize what he looks like in great detail, which was very fun. I felt like this bear, bard, barbarian guy was very physically active, so I decided to have a little bit of fun with his pose, and the description had no mention of his weapon, but in the little chibi form, he has like a staff covered in flowers, kind of giving druid vibes, which is interesting because he's not a druid. Um, but yeah, I wanted to treat it more like a bow staff and just have him in this like fun pose. <laughs> Something that was really interesting is that I thought it would be harder to design characters or to draw characters with these like very detailed descriptions and reference. But I found actually that the opposite was true. When someone tells you in great detail exactly what to draw, it made the process of making this video so fast and so easily. It was honestly a breath of fresh air like I feel like I want to make more videos like this where I ask for detailed characters or prompts uh, that way I don't have to take up time thinking about you know making a design and making all of these choices with a character like a lot of the intellectual work is already done for me so my last video that I just uploaded was the Drawfee Cinematic Universe, and that video took so much brain power, y'all. I had to come up with the concepts of the movies, I had to pick the characters, I had to try to figure out what my version of them looked like. Um, and granted, a lot of those were already pre-existing characters, but there was just so much choice that had to be made from the composition to the backgrounds that I was just so overwhelmed and that video took so long to make whereas this one was easy breezy beautiful cover girl like it was just a nice breath of fresh air so I'm hoping to do more videos like this in the future where I design characters let me know in the comments down below what a good equivalent um, prompt would be, because this was designing your d d characters. I guess the obvious one would be, like, designing your OCs, but is there another, like, big swath of character creation that I am not privy to? Let me know in the comments down below. Yeah, but you can see we're getting to Spine's coloring now. It, this part was really fun because you can see the chest hair. That's, like, what gives him his bear vibe, and then also his really hairy legs that are more animalistic. And then his coat is um, this like ombre of these different colors and it had all this gold accenting on it. So that was fun to sort of figure out. And then I, I just love, there's something so funny about these athletic shorts with a belt. It's, oh my gosh, it's giving so early Superman, like 1950s comic. I just love it. Oh, it wasn't a bow staff. It was an axe. Well, I completely misremembered that. You can tell I drew these a long time ago. I love how I shade metal. I'm so talented. Anyway, yeah, we're just adding that gold detailing now. And after this, um, we're just going to work on the highlights and the lowlights to make the gold look like it's actually a reflective material. And now I'm adding the flowers, which I did remember from the design. So there's like vines wrapping around this really, really long axe. Oh, and now I'm doing his backpack, which had like not much detail, but there was a little magic eight ball on it, which was so charming. I don't know what the flavor of this campaign setting is, but it seems delightful and indulgent and I love it. 
This is the finished illustration of Spine. I think my favorite part of him is his uh, chest hair and also how many scars he has. So much fun. Tony's character is Crunk the Grung, a little drunk poison frog monk. They are about three feet tall, blue and gray looking like a bullfrog and a tree frog mixed together. They always have some kind of alcohol that is half their size. Oh, half their size. Well, I did that wrong in a barrel on their back. Mink's robes, both a very deep V. Dyslexia strikes again, folks. I completely missed the fact that the alcohol on their back is supposed to be half their size. I made it cartoonishly big, but in my defense, I just wanted to draw a cute widow three foot frog, so I thought it would look cute if the alcohol was really big. I put it in like a clay tablet. I also uh, decided that the word mink was a typo and that it was supposed to be just monk's robe has a very deep V and not like mink fur because that just felt incorrect. Yeah, this is the most straightforward of any of the designs just because monks are very simple. You know, it's just robes and also they're a frog. So I don't know, and they're tiny. It was just very easy to do. I slipped back into my more usual cell shading style where, you know, you saw my underdrawing, now I'm doing the inks over it to just make everything really clean and avoid those hairy lines. And then, yeah, after I'm done inking this in, I'm gonna get to the coloring process. So this was very not stressful and it was really, once again, head empty. I'm drawing a tiny cute frog, um, yeah. I like, I like their toes. I think that it's fun that frogs' feet are webbed. I like looked up real pictures of toads uh, when I was making this image. And I always find it fascinating, sort of the zeitgeist and how we think of animals. You know, I normally think of the cute illustrations first before the actual physical beings in real life. I don't know if anyone else is like that. But the other day I like looked at an elephant and they're kind of horrifically wrinkly, scary looking. Like they look almost nothing similar to Dumbo. It's a very strange thing. Uh, I think that is a very weird phenomenon. Does anyone else do that? I do, but that might just be because I'm an illustrator. Anyway, I'm just adding the shading onto the frog. The trickiest thing with this little person is that I didn't know quite what shade of gray to use. I didn't know what color to use in the background, but in the end, these are the colors and the finished product that I decided to end with. I think they look cute. They use that leather strap to carry this giant alcohol on their back. Christopher submitted Mirth, a satyr bard, dressed in Elizabethan puffy clothes with shorter neck length hair that has the tips dyed blue as a highlight to the bright yellows and reds of her outfit. She's a glamour bard, so lots of sparkles in the such. Coming from the Fae, she uses a lot of debuffing spells against enemies and then lets nature take its course when it comes to the rest of the party beating up said enemies. Her stolen motto is, if you're not cheating, you're not trying, which means she generally has to keep the spell slot on hand for casting and visibility. My impression of Mirth based off of this description is that she very much is a trickster archetype, and I absolutely loved the idea of dressing her in Elizabethan era clothing. I feel like that era of history isn't utilized nearly enough when it comes to fantasy media. Uh, yeah, so I looked at several Elizabethan era portraiture to sort of figure out the outfit, but when I was like, blocking in and trying to figure out the design that I wanted, I treated this more like how I would imagine a fashion designer comes up with an outfit or a design. I have no idea if that's actually true because I know nothing about fashion designers, but yeah, I just took like the bright colors that I wanted. You're gonna see in just a moment when I finish this like black backdrop, here it is. I'm just putting in these huge globs of color to sort of give the vibe and overall impression of what I want the finished piece to look like. Uh, even though it's not, doesn't quite end up this messy, I make it much cleaner than this in the finished product. So I end up doing my more usual style. I could have at this point kept just making layers and layers and layers on top of one another. Uh, to be more painterly, but I really felt like I, that underdrawing was just to capture 
the vibe of everything. So you can see here, I'm really doing some intricate inking work on the hair. I made it like very short and choppy and her eyes are sort of not quite goat-like, but I just made them a little far apart and she looks a slightly unsettling in a way. I just wanted to give her this dark fey kind of creepy vibe, which was really fun because she has all of these very bright colors. I wanted it to look like, you know, maybe she just came out of a tavern having completely got it shoisted, or maybe she just devoured the blood of an innocent. I don't know. But yeah, it, it was fun to do. Here I'm addling some signature Nathan ruffles. I haven't gotten to do some really pretty lace in a long time. So that was really fun to just be able to add that nice uh, almost curtain-like quality to the bottom of the skirt. The legs were a little tricky because it was satyr. You know, if I covered up the legs completely, you would not be able to tell that this was a fawn. It would just be a lady with horns and floppy ears. So I wanted to raise the front of the skirt just so you could really see the goat legs. Uh, yeah, so you know exactly what you're dealing with when you meet uh, Mirth, which is fun. I really like her necklace. I like her design. I'm just sort of finicking with the neck and I guess the line width at the moment. We're about to get into color, which is going to be really fun. What I ended up doing is, you know, the design and the description talked a lot about how there's blue in the hair and there's bright yellow and bright red in the actual dress. So I wanted to make my own pattern that was loosely inspired by different uh, patterns from the eras. I end up going with these sort of closed flower buds and then open flowers that just felt kind of fun. I use a very um, golden, almost mustardy color for the yellow and I make the red just a little cooler. It's a, it's a kind of a cooler shade of red, but still very bright. And I just used the duplicate tool to make a whole bunch of them. And yeah, and there it is. You can see I just kind of cut out what I needed for the outfit. And then I went back and forth on whether or not to make the uh, fanning on the collar and the bottom of the skirt white or black, but I felt like black just was like the right vibe for this, you know, morally gray character. And yeah, I interpreted sparkly more as shiny. So I have these like really pretty highlights. It makes the dress feel almost metallic in a way. Uh, yeah, here's here I'm playing with that white. I don't believe I keep it. I'm pretty sure I go back to black in a moment. Um, though if this stays white, that's going to be so funny. I'll be wrong again for another time. Oh no, I was wrong. I can already tell that I'm wrong. It's too close to the ending of the image. I guess I decided to keep it white at the last moment. I don't know. I liked the black, but this is the finished image. I made the background green and I kept the white. I think it looks pretty. I think it looks good either way. Uh, yeah, let me know which one you preferred in the comments below. Johan submitted Gunther, half-orc brawler. He's a former circus strongman with a big waxed mustache and oil-combed hair, and he goes shirtless whenever he can. Think classic bare-knuckle boxer and loose trousers mixed with a significant bit of Major Armstrong from Full Metal Alchemist. I adore a circus performer and especially a strong man. It's me. It's Nathan. Oh no, people are playing to my um, strengths. So yeah, it was really fun to do this half orc, especially to like practice anatomy. Uh, it's always fun with fantastical creatures because you can sort of exaggerate musculature to the full extremes uh, in a way that you wouldn't really do with like more human characters or realistic styles. So yeah, I just looked up a bunch of circus imagery and there was always, just as the description said, a guy with a waxed mustache, love some handlebars, and normally holding like a really heavy weight above his head. I thought about going with, uh, you saw just there, this like dumbbells, barbells, I don't know the name of weights, but I ended up not using that and just going with like a singular really big uh, weight that just has like a thousand pounds on it <laughs> because I don't know, maybe it's a thousand pounds or maybe it's a, a sleight of hand trick. You know, you can never really trust circus performers. I like how his face came out. That was really fun to do. He looks so charming and like 
old timey. I didn't quite know what to do with his footwear, but I just sort of gave him some of those like ace bandage wraps. I don't know. That felt very, um, I don't know, like maybe he has injuries and just needs extra support or maybe it's just an aesthetic choice. I just didn't really feel like drawing shoes if I'm being totally honest. And if you just add some bandages, it looks intentional and anime. And could you want anything more? I think I was also slightly inspired by like Legend of Zelda and especially the people in Kakariko Village. They always just have, you know, little shoes kind of like that but I didn't go all the way with giving him sandals he just sort of has the wrap and um the socks kind of a thing I don't know his footwear is questionable I love how I rendered this guy's uh color I use procreate when I draw and I never typically render um skin this shiny but I was like what the hey I'm actually gonna use the lighting tool like there's this part of procreate with brushes just called light and turns out when you use those on skin at least green skin it looks really good so yeah i was very happy with how this came out it reminded me of the artist babs tar who did a very iconic run on uh, batgirl so yeah the last thing i do is just adjust his head a little bit um so it's a little more to the side and this is our finished strong man love how he looks gunther so iconic I, yeah, um, he's strong, he's tough, and he's got candy striper shorts. It's really the perfect package. Our last character comes to us from Sir Camelot, and it's another bard, but this time a tiefling named Joskinar Solshred. I think that's how you say it. What we know about him is that he uh, very much loves his drow wife. We love that. And he plays the lute, is a massive flirt, and has graying hair at his temples. By the time I got to Soul Shred, I did draw these in the order that I've presented them here to you. I really just wanted to put everything together. I longed for like really cool anatomy, but also fun poses, you know, so I was just really playing with everything here. So this one also has a tiny, tiny bit of a background. It's really just sort of the inference of a wall and a light behind him. I also got Rascal vibes from this tiefling. I don't know, just something about tricksy bards. I think my fans have a type and I cannot blame them. So I did this pose for some more anatomy work, which was very satisfying. I also had the luxury once again of a reference image. So yeah, one of the interesting things about this guy's design is that his ears are actually super, super tall and he doesn't have horns like most tiefling art that I see. And so, yeah, I applaud um, this character, uh, Sir Camelot. It was very unique. I don't know where you came up with the ears and like the long eyebrows, but I thought it was cool. Anyway, yeah, so you, what I wanted to do was basically make him look like um, just a tiny bit, just a little bit like a slut. There we go, I said it. So I wanted him to be just very promiscuous. And to do that, I wanted his shirt to be super sheer and to have this like bold light behind him so that we can pretty much see everything and nothing is left up to the imagination. I also liked putting us at this lower angle, like we're looking up at him. Yeah, I like to imagine that POVU are uh, on a heist with Soul Shred and you jumped over the wall first and you're letting him know it's safe, come down. <laughs> and that's kind of what's happening here. Uh, yeah, it was a really fun note to like end this little mini series of D&D characters on, especially because it just sort of used a little bit of everything that I'd done up to this point. Like even the more painterly style that I was doing towards the beginning of the images, I sort of brought back with the way I did his shirt. Um, yeah, but it's still cell shading too. Um, lots of tricks, lots of overlays, but yeah, I'm very happy with how it worked. And then the light technique that I figured out on Gunter, I used for these leather pants, which was fun. Yeah, and then just a little bit of a night sky. Um, I ditched those stars because they weren't giving. And yeah, you're just committing crimes with this man, but he won't date you because um, he loves his wife but maybe you are his wife. This is the finished illustration. I am very uh, happy with how it came out. I like his undone tie bow thing. 
And yeah, those were six of your D&D characters. Thank you to my Patreon members for supporting the channel financially. If you want to get a part of this action for the next video of this kind, the link is in the description down below. Just for $4 a month, you can have your name in the end credits, and you too can make recommendations for characters in the backgrounds of my videos, or for like fun videos like this where it's just all about you. Don't you want to be a part of that? It sounds like fun. So yeah, um, that's pretty much it. Here are the end credits. Special thanks to Anna Sophia Boyd, Axilius the Great, Bodhi, Blue Uwu, Kay Clark, Christopher, Dabadudu, Dax Quinn, Aaron Martin, Emma Wee, Gay Jarris, J. Johar, JD Boy 2000, Johan, Kitsune Chibiko, Lucky Paradox, Melon, Mild Moth Man, Mistake. Native Runner, Orion Amastasia, Pinecone, Potion Cellar Door, Rin, Scorching Ray, Sir Camelot, Smalls the Sax Jammer, Shernanigans, Tad the Turtle, Tarthalinor, The Real Michael, Thumper Daytime, Thony, Tortilla Chips, Tuesdays Anyways, Tundra Katie Bean, and Tuppence Pies. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Nathan, and I'll upload a new video real soon. <laughs> Bye!